Hi, this is Tim Enlow. I'm here at Newport Assembly of God with Pastor Gary Bellis. Pastor Gary, thanks for letting me bug you today. No problem. Um, Pastor Gary and this church at, at Newport are extraordinarily unique uh, in the churches that we've traveled in over the last 27 years or whatever, um, in that there it's a rural context. Um, this county is, what? Um, 46,000. 46,000 people. Population. Uh, we're in Pennsylvania. and pretty much the, near the dead center of PA. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, is the, what are the demographics of this county? Uh, pretty much white, um, very poor. 52% uh, of our students qualified for the free and reduced lunch program. Here in the town of Newport, 1,700 people. 62% uh, of all the housing units are, are rentals. Wow. So it's a, it's a poor area. And so, so Pastor Gary has been here now 44 years. 44 years, and this church has an imprint and a footprint upon not only the city of Newport, but really the entire county and surrounding regions. They've been involved in church planting. Matter of fact, one of your church plants just went sovereign. Just went sovereign three and, weeks ago. And yeah. uh, now all of a sudden they've got another one, well, kind know. of a non traditional <laughs> church plant bubbling up, but Pastor Garrett, would you um, tell us a little bit about kind of your story, how you got here and whatever, and then uh, let's talk a little bit about the ministries that are going on here, because I think uh, what you're going to hear is not only going to inspire you personally, but I think it's also going to cause some serious Holy Spirit creative juices to begin to stir in your mind for what is possible in your context. I was uh, born in Harrisburg, which is half an hour from here. Uh, actually, from fifth grade on, grew up in Duncannon. Okay. You know, which is about 12 miles from here. And but actually, received Christ here at the church that I now pastor, uh, and my wife to be on the same day. <laughs> uh, I was a, a druggie and um, all messed up, and um, you know, through a series of events, we wound up in church, which was a miracle in and of itself. And it was on a Palm Sunday in 1971, and that's when we both accepted Jesus. It was a very conservative church at that time, and we were definitely not conservative. <laughs> Long eared dippy freight type you know, thing. But anyway, so we were redeemed there. And uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit just a few days after I, I accepted Jesus. Um, someone gave me a book. I think it was by Basham, okay. actually. Yeah. about receiving the Holy Spirit. Probably and, a handbook uh, on Holy Spirit exactly, baptism. Exactly, yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. And it, it uh, happened in my room, my mm. bedroom at night. Uh, just boom, and that never looked back since. Mm. So uh, we were uh, saved in, in, in uh, Palm Sunday, married in June, in August I was in Bible school. <laughs> uh, Zion, it was then Zion. And um, then came back, was youth pastor for a year, and now I've been lead pastor for 44 years. Wow. So this church, um, what's so unique about it to me is your compassion outreach. I mean, I'm, I'm serious. I have never seen a church, honestly, of, of I'm, I'm going to make a big statement. Um, I don't think I've seen a church of any size have the scope of compassion ministry that this church has. I mean, it's it's staggering it's amazing mind-blowing and f going for so long how, how did all of that develop how did you guys get a heart for that uh it started with me watching a news broadcast when russia was imploding if you can believe that when everything was falling apart the former, former soviet union and i found myself weeping watching people standing in bread lines it just had an impact on me and so through a series of divine appointments i connected with several other pastors and uh, we determined to do work in, in Russia. And so they assigned me, and I was rather reluctant in it, to because we, we, we were going to use humanitarian products to get into and, and you know create a, a foundation from which to share the gospel. And uh, uh, so uh, that I started looking for donors. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bread Life Outreach grew out of that. At so that, Bread of Life Outreach is... Your church is... It's our main compassion. Your nonprofit, separate, but it's the church. It's not. It's, it's not actually separate. under our 501c3. It is. Okay. It is. And, uh, but in, in the day when we were shipping to Russia, the State Department had a program called the Fund for Democracy and Development. Lee Iacocca actually ran that. Okay. Oh, wow. And um, we could uh, target... We could put together a container of humanitarian products 
and then our State Department would ship it to an address of our choice anywhere in the former 11 time zones of the former Soviet Union. So we went to Russia and we identified with believers coming out from underground from all the persecution. All of them, all the pastors I met in the first two years were in jail, were in gulags wow. for their faith. And so we teamed up with them, helped them to get established, and we helped them to, to revitalize churches, plant churches, and uh, we'd always ship a container into a new area, come in behind it with the team, mm -hmm. do evangelism, and then plant a wow. church or revitalize a church that needed help. So that was the connection for you. It actually happened overseas it where did. you saw the connection between meeting the tangible needs of people yes. and their acceptance of the gospel. Yes. Yeah. So we look, we're doing it long distance. Why not do it at home? So how did it start at home then? Uh, well, we started uh, by people just like we filled the containers for Russia, people just bringing products and going to friends and getting products. And uh, we would uh, bring them to our, our church building, load them into boxes, and lay hands on them during the Sunday morning service and pray, and then ask people to take them home. Uh, I saw you do home. that on Sunday morning here. Yeah, I was still very moving, actually. We still do it. Yeah, we still do it after all these years. So they, they would take them home. That's how it started. And then with the other donors that we got, you know, concerning our Russian ministry, it just blossomed. It's crazy. So just a real slight excursus here. So on Sunday morning in the service, um, they have, what, what are the boxes called again? Blessing boxes. Blessing boxes. So they're full of specific things, mm -hmm. uh, staples. Non-perishable. Non-perishable staples. staples. Mm -hmm. And so the pastor gets up and goes, hey, we're going to, for all that's going to be distributed this week, let's, let's pray. They lay hands on that box and pray. And then he says, you know, hey, if, if you know someone that can benefit, that you could be a witness to Christ to take one of these home with you, or hey, if, if it could benefit you, if you're if you're going through a difficult time and this could help you, please grab one. You know, they, these are here to help. And it's just so amazing because they were stacked out here. We're in the lobby right now. They're stacked out in the lobby and to see them cleared out by the end of service. Uh, I wonder how many of those boxes you guys have <laughs> distributed. Not a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> Over how many years now? Yeah, it's been, we've been doing this 26 years. Yeah, 26 years, wow. Yeah. Okay, so so sorry. So you get, you started with the boxes and then how did it scale? Then uh, we we got an outbuilding. And, you know, we're talking rural here now, mm -hmm. so it was literally a, a pole building. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we went from there to a rented warehouse in town, about 6,500 square feet. Uh, very odd shaped, L shaped, difficult to manage warehouse, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And we've got racks three three high, and so we can we got a lot of product in it, and so it went there. And then. Mm -hmm. uh, so now today, we, we have our philosophy is to serve the struggling, to help the helpers, and to encourage the entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So serve the struggling is people that just don't have enough paycheck to get them through. And we don't take any kind of government assistance. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any stipulations on income levels that we can help as far as people. Um, and then uh, we help the helpers. These, this would be uh, school teachers or um, children and youth, or Office of, of um, the Aging, or veterans organizations. We want to help them become successful in what they do. Mm -hmm. And then encourage the entrepreneurs. Um, usually when churches go to businesses in the community, we're asking for money or some kind of help to do something we want to do. We reverse that process. So now we're, we're going and asking them to put their hands out, mm -hmm. and we give to them. A very simple little basket of goodies, coffees, teas, uh, health bars, snacks, that mm -hmm. kind of thing, and with a personalized card mm -hmm. that says thank you for making our community successful. The teachers, um, we do six pantries and schools, uh, food and personal hygiene products for poor kids to take home at night. And, um, and then we do, um, uh, we, every, every year we have bags that we hand out to every teacher we, we uh, have the confidence of all the school districts in the area, and there's like six of them that we work with. Wow. And uh, we get the names of all their teachers, all their staff, and we actually do a personalized card to each teacher. Wow. And then thanking <laughs> and six them for different school districts. Yeah. Making, thanking them for making our kids successful mm. in life. And, um, and it's filled with all kinds of goodies. I mean, everything, hand cleaners to little rewards for the students. Mm. And, yeah, we sweep the floor, throw it in, you know. Yeah, That's sure. Or sort of tickle with it, whatever it is. Yeah. Well, with this, how, how has this affected your people? Like, uh, you know, we were discussing earlier, 
uh, about the Holy Spirit's role in empowering us for mission. And you made a great statement. I don't know if you remember what we were talking about, but you said, I don't think revival is this. I think it's this. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? I don't look at revival as someone coming in and just stirring up our church body and then moving, and we have this peak, and then we go back down. Revival is where we actually become the witnesses that Christ called us to do. So we get outside of the building. That passage in Acts, you know, where it talks about we're, we're going to go out and be witnesses. That It's a noun there. Mm -hmm. it's, not an, it's not an adjective, you know. So it's, it's we become something, and that something is we, we witness about Jesus. And the Motel 6 philosophy in, in attending church anymore doesn't fly anywhere in the United States. It just doesn't anymore. Motel 6 philosophy is? It, we'll leave a light on for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Come on in. And well, <laughs> people will walk by your light right. all the time. So it's a matter of how can we find um, strategic and innovative ways to get out into our community and identifying the specific needs in the community and then asking the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and guidance as to how to impact mm -hmm. our community. One of the intriguing things about this ministry context is, um, so it's a very innovative model. Uh, for some people, they go, well, you know, to have a compassion, have a dream center or something, you need to be in a, a certain urban thing with this kind of, but I mean, you defy all that, uh, which is really extraordinary. I mean, I think what, what God is doing here through this church, um, number one, shouldn't be unusual. And, but I, I, I think it's a great model for others um, to follow, do you have uh, resources? Um, like I, I had a sheet that you had given me before that kind of out spelled out what Bread of Life does, and it's like three pages front and back of. I mean, it's just astounding. Uh, so for someone that's watching this and goes, you know, hey, I, I'm kind of interested in in getting this going. Um, do you guys have a website or? We do have a website. Okay. Um, you can go to our church website. Just okay. Google Newport Assembly of God. And, and here will be the yeah. website right here. <laughs> yeah. Like magic under my hands. And it's Red Life Outreach is what okay. we do. But it's it's grown into so many different things. Now we have a... We have Explain that. Well, uh, um, 25 weeks ago, we did it uh, the beginning well, of... Wait one uh, second. I'm interrupting you. Okay, so... You've been here 45, four years. You're not allowed to innovate anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Those days are all behind you. you know, what gives? Why? You know, I mean, that's so exciting because this dinner church idea is, is so innovative. And again, you can't do this in a rural, impoverished county. Mm -hmm. And yet, here you go again. You know? All that's <laughs> about partnership. It's about, it's about linking up with other people and, and just being willing to network mm -hmm. with people, even outside of maybe our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Uh, to uh, to accomplish specific objectives, with ours, of course, it's all kingdom oriented. Sure. But um, yeah, it's just uh, we we had just uh, we just saw a church plant that we had just became sovereign several weeks ago, which we had a building given to us for a dollar, mm. you know, on ten acres, totally debt free, everything in it, every stick of furniture in it, and everything, you know. So that was pretty cool. Um, now that's running about 150, and um, that's, so that's it's, it's incredible. So we're kind of done with that. So we we uh, we started this uh, dinner church concept, and it's not our original idea. If you would uh, Google Fresh Expressions okay. or the Dinner Church Collective, okay. actually a guy Verlon Fosner from Seattle is an AG pastor that really uh, got this going okay. as far as within our our setting, and. Um, yeah, we just have a, a dinner every Thursday. That's the day we chose at 5.30, and we meet there, and we have uh, canned music as they're coming in, Christian Contemporary. Mm -hmm. Then we get a worship team, you know, to, uh, to do some live worship before we eat dinner. And uh, that's just for about 10 minutes. And then we have a meal. Then we do a little bit of uh, like an eight-minute message. Mm -hmm. and, um, but the key is the conversation around the table. Mm -hmm. And we build this food, friendship, and faith. Mm. And uh, so we started out with 12 people 25 meals ago, and today we average 143. <laughs> our, our emphasis is on the nuns and the duns. Nuns, if, if they are asked what their religious affiliation is, none. Mm -hmm. Duns are those who, I'm done with church. Yeah. For whatever reason, I got offended. I got distracted, I just fell away, whatever. 
So that's our emphasis. They're the people that we're trying to reach. So we have a church planted a mile from our church. Yeah. And we have a whole discipleship piece built into it. And so it, the evangelism takes place around the tables and then the discipleship takes, takes place. We're new at this now, so we're kind of cutting our teeth as we go, but it's spirit led and yeah. I feel like I just been saved again. You know, I Because I was it. a radical <laughs> idiot running around evangelizing and, and honestly, to be honest with you, where my status is now as a pastor with staff and so on, I don't get out with mm -hmm. a lot of unbelievers anymore. And that really bothered me for a long period of time. Now, pff, it's like they come to us. You know, so this is, this is my favorite day of the week. I mean, it's right up there with Sunday morning, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I get you. It is. And so, can you tell me just one story that's come out of the dinner church that kind of stands out to you? I know I'm putting you on the spot, but. Yeah, you know what You know what really strikes me is uh, uh, because we have no expectations. So I had a, I, I sat down with a brother and sister, and I never had to say who I am. I have my name, Gary, on my, we all have tag, everyone, yeah. attendees and workers all have, all have uh, name tags. And so, you sprinkle your people around all the tables? And, we do, yeah, yeah, yeah but, it. but it, it's whatever. Yeah. You know, who, who is God leading you to? Mm -hmm. Build a relationship there. So anyway, I, I sit down at this table, and, and there's a brother and sister, and they're in their late 30s, early 40s, and um, I always ask, you know, what, about them and, and they're telling me 15 minutes about these model trains they like to do and I was ready to throw myself off a bridge to be <laughs> honest with that you know it's just it was just driving me crazy but anyway you listen so you so you then eventually can talk so I, I did not introduce myself as a pastor never do and uh, and and I say excuse me I gotta go do a little thing right now and I gave a little message mm -hmm. came back and sat down and the woman said, uh, after about two sentences of talking, she said, uh, oh, by the way, do you know I'm, I'm a lesbian? And I said, hmm, I'm a heterosexual, pleased to meet you. <laughs> you know, and it just went, but you know what? Someone like that, there, there would be some sister or brother do good in many of our churches right. that would blow them right out of the right, water right, right. when they found out what's going on. Now, not every church is like that, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying, that's the potential here. There are no expectations yeah. uh, from that level. It's, it's friendship. Yeah. Holy Spirit does his work. Come to Jesus. Then we see what But the Lord does. soften the soil. And, yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. Yeah. And then we also had people, I was sitting at their table, a couple, they said, uh, and, and they've been living together eight years. They shared that. And they said, you know what? We, we're just going to talk to the mayor about getting married. And I said, I don't think I'm going to help you with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a pastor. So I gave them some material. We had some meetings. I performed a wedding ceremony. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Again, we're trying to build community. That's what it's, it's building community, mm -hmm. building community. Uh, and that's how we build our, our, our dinner church. So. One of the things that's so extraordinary here is I think, I know the, the metaphor of the net, casting a net out the side of the boat to catch the fish. You're, it seems like the, uh, the size of the squares in your net are always becoming finer and finer uh, to catch more and more and more. And uh, I really love that. To secure the 99, go out for the one. I love how the Holy Spirit uh, moves in the heart of an ex-druggie uh, with long hair, which yeah. Jesus had long hair. Uh, and uh, it brings you back after Bible college to the church you got saved in mm -hmm. and then plants you here. And, you know, I, it's just an extraordinary, extraordinary thing. I